We've got uh, Addy Pinar, uh, we've got Dan Millwards, and we've got David, well, actually not both of them. <laughs> uh, we've got David Perrell, and we've got uh, Jess Green. So, is that my phone? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's your phone. The discussion topics for today will be selling WordPress themes and plugins. We're going to get some insight from the guys on what they've learned. Selling WordPress development services giving back to the community, and what went wrong, where can others learn from your mistakes. Uh, okay, before I get to that, um, I'm just going to give everybody a chance to actually introduce themselves. I'm going to start from this side. Jess, could you tell us a bit more about yourself? Here we go. Okay, welcome everybody. Okay, so very basically, this is the developer track. First time I'm sitting here, I'm more of a client. So, wow, what can I develop? I can probably do, I can probably do a link. That's probably what I can develop. So the reason that I'm here in terms of making money out of WordPress is just probably to add the, the client point of view. So just bear that in mind with questions and, and comments. And yeah, I run quite a few WordPress sites that mainly, uh, I might chat a bit more about this later, mainly provide leads um, for, for partners, for business partners. Um, so yeah, more about that later. Dan? Thanks. I'm um, Dan Millwood. Um, I run the getshopped.org website, um, home of the WP Commerce plugin. Um, and yeah, our business is based around monetizing WordPress and creating WordPress esque software solutions. Um, David Pirro, I spoke a bit earlier, um, co founder of Obox Design. We make premium themes because we also do some stuff with Tumblr and Postress. But uh, the majority of the stuff is WordPress. Also, um, occasional client work if uh, it's a fun enough project. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I'm Aidy. Um, I actually started my WordPress journey with doing client work um, and then has since um, evolved to doing products and WordPress themes uh, specifically. And a bit of background on me, uh, well, I run a WordPress development company, so yeah, I make money with WordPress every day. And now to selling plugins and themes. Over to Dan, and I'd like you to give us a bit of information on what you've learned about selling plugins, uh, specifically plugins. Hello, everybody. Um, <clears throat> Well, so basically we use a freemium business model and um, so we, we actually give a, a lot away and um, we basically upsell our customers with um, you know, certain functionality that may not be necessary in our, our free software. Um, we, you know, I agreed with a lot of what Adi was talking about in his presentation and um, yeah, there's a lot of space out there that sort of seems to be ignored by, not intentionally ignored, but just isn't sort of, well, it kind of is ignored by WordPress, and uh, there's a lot of room out there to create um, plugins and either give them away for free or sell them. Um, our, our main source of income is through selling plugins, and uh, it's complemented nicely by giving lots and lots away. Um, well, we we do like themes as well as a plugin, which is Obox Mobile, um, and we don't really have a freemium model for our plugin necessarily because, well, first of all, what we offer is uh, already on its own quite a, I'd say at the moment in our market, which is smartphone mobile plugin, uh, it's very focused. So they can, I believe, they can pay for the service that we provide them in that sense. Um, we we do have some freemium themes though, where we the, the person can download the theme for free and if they want extra features there's a little buy button in the general settings options. Um, but you know, I, I believe like the, the more we've been developing themes, the more I feel that instead of uh, releasing one theme which has X uh, feature and another theme which has Y, uh, we should maybe package those, each one as, as a plugin on its own. So if people don't necessarily want your theme, they just want a shopping basket or something. Uh, they could just download the plugin, and while you make the theme, you could uh, 
you have the benefit of knowing your, your plugin inside out and you can just style it accordingly so that you could upsell uh, on that side. So the freemium model, uh, Dan, I think you're, uh, you see, why I've chosen each of these people is um, they have something different to offer. Dan, for example, mentioned that he's on the freemium model side of things. So I think you're probably the best person out of the four to comment here. How exactly do you make the freemium model work for you? How do you add, like get it going? How do you engage people? How do you get them to download? Well, um, I, I guess in some ways we leave in, intentional gaps in the fun. Can, is that working? It's working better now. Yeah, and, and we leave intentional gaps in the 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 set of features that come with WP Commerce, um, and we we upsell those um, within the user interface itself. So you go into WP Commerce, and you'll specifically be looking for a piece of functionality. And, and that won't be there. Um, so, <clears throat> so one of the features in WP Commerce is, um, well, you know, there's, uh, there's the presentation no, settings. And in the presentation settings, people can choose from like a default uh, view, a way of laying out their products or a grid view. And um, we upsell the grid view. And... Um, it's it's right there, and we just upsell a couple of uh, search features, um, <laughs> and a lot of the payment gateways as well. <laughs> it's um, but I mean I think e-commerce is so infinitely vast, as I was sort of talking about in my presentation earlier, that it would be one hell of a plugin if we were to try and squeeze in absolutely everything. Um, it would just be completely bloated. In fact, I think it would be impossible. Um, I don't think really, really good e-commerce is even possible in a non-open sourced way. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, so membership sites. All of these guys, uh, well, bar Jess, uh, have to in some way create a membership site. So I feel that all of them have learnt from this. Uh, they, you, you sign up. Yes, there's a support aspect. We'll get that, get to that later. But they've created software. Um, Woo Themes, for example, recently redid their systems and provided a new interface. And I think Addy can comment more on that. It's enriched the member experience. Um, the guys at Obox, uh, they have a similar kind of dashboard and place where you can go and find your themes. Um, I'm not sure about Get Shopped, if you guys have got something like that yet, um, but you definitely have a big membership following your site. So I'm going to hand over to Addy first, and I'd like to hear about what you have to say. Thanks. Um, so basically in terms of the stuff we sell, we, uh, we sell once-off products, which means a once-off fee, um, but then our upsell um, in terms of spectrum of our products is obviously our club subscriptions. Uh, which allows our users to get in, you know, get access to all of our products, uh, and I say that's an upsell because it's slightly more expensive um, in the longer run, um, but also because there's that monthly passive income that's coming in, which is obviously great for business, for forecasting, for budgeting, all those kind of things. So to be able to sell that, you actually need to give users something more than just giving them actual products. So what we did with our um, dashboard redesign was we wanted to create a little environment for our users um, in which they can interact with us with their account you know silly little things invoicing I mean it all sounds um, you know quite obvious I mean it's it's the same with any other hosted web app um, but you need to offer them that kind of environment um, and as I said you need to offer them benefits that outweigh the option of going with with the ones of with a once of purchase, with a once of products. Um, in, in online terms, the kind of buzzword of the stage is um, customer lifetime value. Um, and that's kind of what you want to aim for is uh, determining how much a customer is worth to you over X amount of time, X amount of time being the average time that customers have been with you as a customer and just trying to maximize on that. And as I said, the only way to get that um, is to make sure that you offer that value, you offer that um, environment in which they can feel like they are at home. 
Um, so uh, this may be specific more to Obox, but what we've learned is uh, that the people who get the membership uh, option are most of the time developers, people who want to uh, uh, use your themes to, you know, to install in their client sites and modify it, uh, et cetera. So in, in my opinion, like where we see the big draw is like a normal customer who wants to purchase a theme, they, they will never really see the value in owning all your themes unless they're very indecisive. Um, so when you upsell, uh, you that that membership option, like you got to pitch it to developers most of the time, and like that's what we do sort of on our site. Uh, we talk about how we use the, the WordPress core essentially instead of hacking uh, the code, and we show off uh, the the CSS and stuff like that, so they could see that it's a manageable and workable platform that they could use and worthwhile to sign up as a member. It's actually not something we've fully embraced yet on our own website, but it's something we we aim to. Um, I too am a big fan of the Gravity Forms um, operation, and um, <coughs> we're, pr we're probably going to mimic something quite like that. Um, we we sell a members only access plugin from our website, um, and that uses the WordPress roles and capabilities functionality that's inherent within WordPress to uh, to let the user of the plugin uh, create password protected parts of their website that um, are only available to logged in members. So, you know, use your imagination. You could create any all sorts of websites. <coughs> using that plugin. Uh, I've actually been collaborating with Dan on uh, extending that plugin, and uh, one of the audience over there, Johan van Torner, r runs a site called Ancestry24, and they use this plugin. Uh, it helps facilitate the sale of membership to genealogy uh, researchers who access the site, and they then um, research their family tree, build various, build their tree, and uh, yeah, it's it's a really strong piece of software and, and can be quite useful. So it's maybe not a membership site as such, but it's membership software. Okay, so marketing. This is a, a big topic. Um, I think WooThemes and Obox, you guys have uh, got quite a marketing following. Get shopped through your open source uh, endeavors. You guys have got a big community out there. One of the biggest downloaded plugins, Obox. You guys have, I'm sure, like every time you tweet, you get to a massive crowd. Same with Woo Themes. Um, so I'll start with Addy. There we go. So I mentioned it um, in my talk just now when I said that um, you know, code is kind of generic and design is important. And for me, that that design extends to the marketing as well. I think um, if these days, if you're doing anything online, the likelihood is that someone else might have done it already, or someone might, you know, three or four other people might do it immediately after you start doing it. And I think the biggest differentiating factor between the successful and, and unsuccessful companies and startups um, are the ability to actually market their product. Um, and I think within marketing, there are a few challenges. What we've seen at Woo Themes is branding is at most, and when I can say marketing is, I've never been a big fan of paid marketing, so kind of paying um, paying for advertising, putting uh, stuff in people's post boxes. I've never done that. Um, even though it's a, it's a cool trick, I'm going to remember. <laughs> um, so, so, so branding is, is, is very important, I think. Um, spend the time to make sure that your branding and the interactions around your brand is consistent throughout. Um, I think customer service is a, is a spectacular um, tool to use in terms of promoting your brand um, and then just word of mouth and being valuable I think that's kind of often you know missed as it's it's fine to kind of put a little you know tweet this button on your site um, it's generally bullshit if your content is um, you've got to be providing value um, and not just pushing stuff at users people hate I hate when people phone me and try and sell me a SLC contract when I'm a Vodacom customer, I don't like it. That's pushing. That's kind of pushing. You know, but offer me something valuable, and I will actually tell my friends about it. So um, those are the kind of things that we try and do um, do at at, at Woo Themes, um, and that obviously ties into that have that focus in terms of if you have ten customers, ten thousand customers, ten million customers, doesn't really matter. But you've already got the attention of those people. So focus 
99% of your time on that. Um, and because focusing on them will have a kind of viral effect where they acquire the new users for you. So you don't need to focus on that. Um, I think also, you know, particularly South Africans, like our mentality is uh, not ready to shout our mouths off, kind of like Americans do. No. And um, I think that in a way that's sort of wrong. Like we, we must never be shy of if we believe that our product is good, like, and you're given the opportunity to talk about your product, like, uh, speak with confidence. And like, if you if you truly believe that you're going to build a business out of your themes or whatever, your product or whatever, make sure that um, you speak that way. Speak with confidence and like, in, in your copy and everything, which you have to make sure is consistent. Like, make sure that it, it highlights your product uh, as one of the best. And um, I think that's something that. You know, in South Africa, like a lot of people miss out on, and I know that like AD has sometimes a bit of controversy because he's not shy to talk like that, and it's a critical point that um, that we miss in this country. Um, I think for us, um, a lot of a lot of it's through word of mouth as well. Um, we have the we had the advantage of being the first mover in this space, so we were. You know, naturally, if somebody searched for WordPress and e-commerce, would pop up on Google um, at the top, and we still do. And um, but w one of the things we do is we encourage other people to kind of contribute to our software and uh, create businesses and other pieces of software around around WP e-commerce. So a lot of the the developers who are creating their businesses around our business. They too are sort of talking about us, and um, so, so it's kind of yeah viral, you know. Like people are just sort of talking. We don't do a whole lot of marketing. Um, we sp like to sponsor WordCamps, if if um, and there's like one or two websites I really personally like. So um, you know we pay for advertising on those sites as well. Like there's three of them, and uh, that's basically because I like the content on their sites and want to be associated with that. Great, thanks. Yeah, sure. <coughs> uh, just to do with uh, advertising on people's sites when you like, um, what's it, ad fusion? Uh, fusion ads and things like that where you can, you know, put your little banner in, in and you pay like, I don't know, $1,500 for the month or something. Like, if you just see banners around everywhere and of a of a theme company or any company, like you you mustn't assume that they're just uh, converting on those ads. Like, I know that I'm not the only one who's experienced this, but the conversion rates on those type of things is very minimal. So, uh, that thousand five hundred dollars that you spent on that that banner advert, rather dedicated to, you know, either making a better product or uh, some other clever marketing ploy, maybe uh, using your your money to you know, get a subscription on campaign monitor so you can track your, your newsletters and stuff like that. And just because uh, as Dave mentioned, if, if you use that money to improve your product, I think that's the ultimate marketing, right? Um, if, someone else is, if someone else sees uh, implementation of your product somewhere else on the web, you can't buy that kind of, you know, kind of advertising. Um, so that generally is money better spent. I just want to add from a client point of view that I... Yes, Jason. <laughs> that, that I agree with Dan about word of mouth. Whenever me, a colleague, a business person that I know or whoever was looking for a theme or a plugin, we would usually go uh, and first ask either someone who's provided something to us or alternatively, I don't know, someone that we trust in the industry and then we'll go and look for that online. So, I mean, that's, for example, how I was introduced to, to with him. So. I couldn't ag agree more with you guys. Wisdom, pearls of wisdom. So, support. This is, uh, this is a difficult one. Everyone has their opinion of how good or how bad support is. And uh, customers who don't like the support are very vocal about it. Um, as Addy and I were discussing earlier, um, just some clients are douchebags. And, you know, <laughs> we can't help that. <laughs> Uh, so, from a support perspective, um, Jess, would you like to join us on this one? Because I think you can. Definitely. We'll start with you. Well, is there anyone here in this track that was at my talk? Okay, there are a few people. So, I mean, you know what I say is if you're strict and they're not following the rules, you've got to fire them. I won't use the words that I used there, but got to get rid of them. It's basically about the relationship. So, if it's not working, 
and support is one big thing. A lot of, and I don't know who, who's in the audience here, but a lot of people that do offer services work in a very small team or actually sometimes alone. And um, sometimes actually don't have the time or the, the, the resources, let's say, to actually put in a lot of effort into support. And sometimes it's very, very necessary because once that site's up there and the site, let's say, lasts for 10 years, I mean, if anything goes wrong, wow, well, I guess who that guy's going to turn around and want to talk to. Or he's going to go away somewhere else if you don't provide support. So, I mean, that's like, th th that's absolutely, absolutely critical. The example I gave in my talk was SEO. A lot of the WordPress uh, assistance and, and, and um, other than development and paid assistance it has been SEO and I've been very lucky to get a good partner on that uh, and it's just always, always, always been there and that's been, that's been absolutely critical. So, you know, it, it, obviously it's important but it's actually just, and I think with WordPress specifically because it's such an easy thing, so, so many people can easily get into WordPress. Once they're in, now if they get stuck, it's, ev it's even more important. I remember long ago, I'll use a bad word, I used Joomla. And, um, but I never got into Joomla. It was just, there's a developer, that's what it looks like. Yes, that's great. Now I need this. And, and it was all done for me. With WordPress, you can actually step inside. So now you really need that, that support more than, with, I think, with other CMS systems or for blog or site or whatever. I'd like to add something there. Um, what I've been doing recently with my clients is sending them to WP101. Uh, I think the guy's affiliated somehow with StudioPress. Um, WP101 makes these videos. They even do white labeled videos. Uh, really great videos. They're up to date with the new interface of WordPress. These guys have made my life a lot easier. I say to my clients, please watch the videos before you come in and speak to us and we'll do a personal training session with you. But supporting them, it, it can be a challenge. So at least try to give them a tool where they can go on their own and they can learn a bit about the basics. As you say, you can get into WordPress very quickly and you can do quite a lot. So by doing that and using the systems out there, you can help them support themselves. Obviously, the more complicated things, well, you know, they're going to need uh, your help. Over to Dan. Right. <clears throat> so, so support for us has been a, an interesting one because I think um, being an open source uh, solution and having as many users as we do, it's uh, really difficult to support, you know, hundreds of thousands of free users. And um, so for us, it's been about building and slowly building. It's been hard work to create like a support infrastructure that A, allows the community to help the community, B, building in search tools that let people within our forums search for answered questions and C, uh, about building a better premium sort of system and a VIP system where we can personally sort of hand handhold our, our paying customers. Um, yeah, it's just been c crazy insane for us being as big as we are and it's sort of like it was opening up the floodgates and um, fending off like, like bullets from a machine gun. It was like insane. But I, I think we're slowly getting there and... Um, I'm feeling pretty good about it. So, um, the community helps you a lot. That that's one thing that I'm very impressed with is the WP e-commerce community gets involved. They help out. I've met some people around the world through WP e-commerce, and they've helped me. They've uh, given me input. It's just incredible. And that's the open source side of things, anyway. Yeah, actually, the the latest version of our plugin that's um, well coming out shortly a lot of the user interface has been tweaked um, based around, you know, user input from our support forums. Um, it's been, you know, it hasn't been our strongest sort of part of our business, but um, as we invest in more and more people and bring them into our company to actually just do nothing but support, it's actually becoming easier for us to find out the, the pain points for people. And a lot of them are actually around user interface and, um, yeah, we're, we're getting better. And now that WordPress comes with more hooks and filters, it's actually even easier for us to sort of like make our user interface in WP Commerce more like, you know, the WordPress user interface. So people have that sort of continuity of experience. And um, as WordPress gets better, um, I think we get better too. I deviated just a tad, I think. It's okay. Um, uh, with our experience, basically... Uh, we 
with support forums, like it's a good opportunity to interact with your users. Um, and like I've always had like this cynical like sort of idea that like if you build in like a few bugs into your system which are sort of easily fixable, at least you can and your users access your forum, maybe you could get in touch with them and like just show them like you're nice people because uh, essentially on the on the front end <laughs> on the front end like they just see a website with a name and they click buy and it's over. Um, the people behind the themes are usually lingering in the support forums. Um, that strategy didn't work so well. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, we find that you know, when you release a, a sort of a product which kind of just works, like the main issue that you get is when people want to customize it, and that's when the problems come in. They tend to break it. And uh, uh, often what we do is we just say, you know, after maybe the fourth uh, reply to them, and it, we're going nowhere, we just go, what are your login details? And then they, 99% of the time, they actually provide you with that stuff, and you go in and you fix the problem for them. And 99% of the time, it's an end user forgetting to you know, close a, a tag or something, but it's, it, it will be your fault. So you have to be prepa prepared for that stuff. No matter what you do, like, you will not be able to please all your users, and you have to be prepared for essays upon essays which get posted in your forum about how much they hate you and how much they prefer the competition and rah, rah, rah. So um, just be ready for stuff like that if you ever consider having a forum. I actually don't know how you cope supporting free people. Like, wow, <laughs> that's patience of another, another level. So, um, I read a book by Tony Ashio, who's the CEO of Zappos, who got acquired by Amazon a year or so ago for billions of dollars. And Zappos' only competitive advantage was, because Zappos sells shoes, by the way, predominantly, and the only competitive advantage was their customer service. The book's called Delivering Happiness. has changed my, my outlook on, on, on business and on customer service greatly. And I think... I, mean, I, I agree with all the guys in terms of the challenges that are there. Um, what we found is the only real way to solve it is to throw people at the problem, which means hiring, which means increasing the size of the team. Um, we've tried to take a dual approach where we streamline our you know, structures, we streamline our communications, um, we do regular audits of our support. We've, we've had, for example, we worked with a company called CoSupport, um, and the lady that runs it, Sarah Hatter, was the lady that was in, um, responsible for 37 Signals uh, Customer Service Center for six years. So we had people like her, for example, come in and tell us, listen, you guys, this is bullshit, that's not bullshit, um, to kind of improve. So we've taken a deal approach. We've both kind of grown the team um, <clears throat> and then streamlined. Um, and just a parting note, I think, because Dave mentioned something that resonated with me with regards to people having to see the face of the person behind the product because what happens is if you walk into a hardware store and you buy something if you're not happy you go back to that person you give the product back and say can I please get a refund or these are my issues and you are civil with that person because you've got to face them so you're not going to rant and bitch and moan and, and be irrational right mostly most people but online that's not the trend online people um, don't have manners uh, plus there's no body language that gets communicated in, in online um, interactions so it's important um, to, you know, kind of be proactive in terms of that. Um, what this meant for us, for example, and for me specifically, um, and to put this in context, I, I'm the owner of a company that's got 15 people working for us. The whole team is 15 people. And when we recently rolled out the new, our new user dashboard, there were a lot of bugs. And I personally answered every single email that was account-related for, uh, for, account for three weeks. Um, it was up up end of a thousand odd emails, um, and that was important for me as the owner of a company providing technical support and telling users that this is okay and we are helping you, um, and just humanizing that and explaining to them that we are working really hard to make things better for you. And I don't think that you can sell anything online, um, be it WordPress or not, if you don't provide that level of customer service. And then I do believe that. Customer service, great customer service is such a competitive advantage if you can get it right. Cool. Thanks. Great answers. Okay. Selling WordPress development services. Uh, yeah, I've got quite a lot of experience myself with this. Um, it's a challenge. Clients, uh, they, they 
need a lot, they want a lot, and you you need to just deliver. So yeah, from my side, um, I, I could get into a lot, but I'd rather give it over to the guys over here, specifically Jess, because he's got the most experience. Well, most experience being a client, and in my presentation, I, I spoke specifically about it and emphasized on actually educating the client. Once again, you're getting into WordPress as a client. Um, the truth is I can code a little bit more than a link. And um, the reason I can do that is because I can actually get into it. If it was in ASP.net or something else, I, would never, I wouldn't even want to know. Um, but now that it was so easy and I can get in, I want to know more. In fact, when I found out afterwards how easy it was to do a lot of the stuff that I paid a lot of money for in the beginning, I was rather upset. So hopefully prices have come down a little bit. But um, now that I am involved, there's other services that I want. So once you know more, you start asking for more. And you start asking for more complex things that sometimes cost more money. So selling WordPress development services, it's, you, you do get those, those clients that know nothing. And then there's a certain package for them in the beginning. But for those guys that do know something already and already update their sites and even create sites sometimes, just, just simple sites, they need something more complex. And then they, they, they stay your client. So... Yeah, educate them, help them to understand exactly what's going on, show them how to log in, show them what you're doing, teach them, uh, and and you'll, you're you not giving away your secrets, you're not giving away the gold dust that you're going to make all your money off, you, you're actually going to make more out of it. Does anyone else want to say something? Yeah. Um, so a part that we don't talk about in our, you know, when we market Obox, we market it as a theme company, but we also have this sort of like ghost development side to it. And uh, we do actually do quite a lot of client work, but it's, uh, you know, because we're fortunate enough to have uh, our income from themes and cash flow, like we can be very choosy uh, with our clients. Um, like my experience, most of my experience during the daytime is sort of designing client sites and sort of dealing with clients. And like a couple of things that I've learned is, you know, make sure you have sort of a clear spec. And always when you quote people, always build in, uh, you know, a, like a buffer. So if there's a bit of scope creep, like there's always that little bit that's already being paid for. And if they don't, if they don't have any scope creep, well, cool, you get to make an extra bit of money. But um, you must always be ruthless with that type of stuff, ruthless with quoting. And, um, you know, th the one thing that, I, I, that to me is one of the most important things is when a client asks for something, remember that they're asking for it. They're not telling you. And if they are telling you, then you've got to, like, really stand your ground. But if you say, no, b we can't do it because of X, Y, Z, like... Most of the time, they'll be actually be understanding, but you have to be cons uh, very clear about that. So if, if you understand that they are asking, then it's easier to say no, because it's simply a question. Um, if you've got clients who are telling you things, then well, then I hope you have a contract in place. And um, I hope that contract's sort of reasonably clear with like readable English, not lawyer language. Um, and if they go out of scope, then you go, cool, well, you can pay us a 33% deposit, another 30% when you prove the design. And, okay, you still owe us 30%. This is out of scope. You can pass the remaining amount, and then we'll requote you for the new stuff. And um, as long as you're sort of strict about those rules, then the client will respect you. And that's, like, one of the most critical things. I think uh, you've just hit the nail on the head there. Those are all things that I've learned over the last few years with uh, developing WordPress sites. Thank you. Pushing the boundaries. So, um... What do you guys have to say about that? Who first? Cool. Um, the, you know, outside of this room, there's a lot of people who, when they hear WordPress, they think, oh, geez, that, that little blogging platform or that, like, thing which pretends to be a CMS. Um, and like Jeff said earlier, like, people forget that it's actually a framework. Like, the amount of stuff that we've used WordPress for um, to build things like uh, DSTV needed to... Uh, when when people bought adverts, they used to send them like this fold-out pamphlet with all the times of, of all the shows and like the, the minute the gaps in between, and then someone would like remember write down the numbers like of, on a graph and then phone in a, a thing, and we had to rewrite it so it could be digitized, and people just click on the certain things and it emails uh, DSTV with the order. Um, you know, a lot of people think to themselves, well, you, ha you probably had to hack the hell out of WordPress to do that, but that's not true. There's so much functionality in the core where you, you could build these amazing programs and then all they have to do is press update at the end of the day when the new WordPress version comes out and um, everything's still stable and works perfectly fine. Um, I always think to myself, like, never, ever hack the core. Like, if you think to yourself that you have to hack the core, rather, like, put out a question on Twitter or 
in the forums or something, and there's usually a way. There's almost always a way. It's a good one. I, I, I think um, around never hack the core. When WP Commerce, when we launched version one, there was just no way you could have created an e-commerce platform without doing a, at least a small amount of hackery. And I think for us, that's been one of our first mover disadvantages because WordPress back then isn't the beautiful extendable piece of software that it is now. We had to do stuff out of necessi necessity that we wouldn't do today. And um, so, yeah, pushing the boundaries of WordPress is something we like to do. And um, But you just have to do what you've got to do, you know? Like, um, <laughs> we wanted there to be an e-commerce plugin for WordPress, so we had to hack. Thanks. Okay, I'm going to go to the next one. So, yeah, your clients. Um, I think, Jess, you, can you give us some... Uh, we can skip this one if you like. <laughs> Some of these slides were made late at night, so let's skip that. I think coding standards is a really good one. I'm really strict about coding standards with my guys. I, I believe it is very, very important. Word, WordPress codex have CSS coding standards and PHP coding standards. Read those pages. It's important, really. <laughs> So, um, yeah, from, from a perspective of child themes and parent themes, if you're going to work with themes, don't hack the parent theme. Create a child theme, even if, even if it's just a bit of CSS you're going to change. Maybe a line of the functions.php. Create a child theme, don't hack the parents. And I'm going to hand over to the guy. Well, Dan, do you want to? No, not really. Okay. You? Sorry? Okay. Um, remember that uh, the, the WordPress codex is on guidelines. So, like, you know, I, I do the CSS at Obox, um, and I style inline. It's not wrong. It's just different from what uh, uh, WordPress recommend. And you, you, can st you can still style inline and get away with it. It's still fine. Just as long as, like, you maybe alphabet size the, <laughs> the styles and things like that, or group things like these are positioning elements, these are coloring or styling elements, and... These are font elements. Um, as long as you're, like, we're also super strict at, uh, at Obox. Like, every single piece of code, like, I always review it myself, which is a nightmare. Um, but it, it has to be done in, so that the user can read through your code and scan through it easily. Uh, make sure you always comment your stuff as well. And uh, tabbed coding is, like, critical. So, yeah. Um, just, and again, just to build on that. Uh, we've become so strict with regards to our standards that are the code that goes into our products that um, in the past we used to outsource code um, on our themes, um, which just meant that we had all these wide, wide variety of styles because as Dave said, there's no, there's multiple right ways, um, but I think the codex and, and keeping things native, there's kind of always a, always a better way to kind of strive to um, in terms of coding standards. And as I said, what, what we've tried to do at least in terms of People that use our products, doesn't matter which product they use, they can expect a similar style. So there's a consistency and, and standardization, um, which I think is incredibly important. I'd just like to say, um, the, the, I, 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 I read something um, Steve Jobs said to a, a person asking him a question. Somebody sort of said to Steve, you know, so how do you do this? You know, like, why is this software of, software of yours so good? And Steve Jobs sort of said, it's because we employ the best people in the world. And I sort of um, like to take on a little bit of that ethos. And uh, for us, when we employ people now, we, we try to employ people that have worked for WordPress Core. And um, they're all people who are very familiar with the WordPress standards. And uh, I'd like to go back and say we're definitely doing everything in our power to remove all of those old school unnecessary hacks and uh, make our software a better piece of software for you guys. I love WordPress. I'm not the only one out there. Loads of people really love WordPress. These guys, it's, it's evident. They're into it. Everyone in the room. But the ethos is definitely to um, cultivate a strong community, keep it open source. GPL is important. And, yeah, just WordPress rules. <laughs> I just really like to say that 
as I said before, from a client point of view, but also from someone who's a little bit into it. It's absolutely fantastic. I've probably had numerous qu questions and queries and whatnot about WordPress things and always found them on community pages or somewhere on the internet or, th or through someone very quickly. And let's take some other big, I or, or Google, let's take Google. I've probably had about five problems with Google's things, which is maybe less, but I've never found an answer for it on the internet. So, <laughs> you, you know, th that just says something I think about, you, you call it ethos, the, the community. It, it just makes it absolutely magic. And I don't believe any of the other whatever we want to call it, framework, CMS, blog, or I don't think any other uh, of them have that, so, yeah. Social responsibility. Um, well, from my side, we've got involved with a couple of projects, namely one called Positive Heroes. We donated our time to this company, uh, well, non-profit, should I say. Uh, they are an HIV awareness organization um, building positive heroes out of HIV um, patients. And uh, they really have done an incredible job. So we've helped them build their website and get their voice out there. And that's our social responsibility. Um, maybe you guys have something to say? Uh, we recently did something re uh, with Oxfam. I mean, it wasn't WordPress, but you know, they they needed a, a platform to promote their their new grow campaign, where it encourages people to sort of grow their own food and stuff like that. Um, mainly, uh, they were hoping that it would spread you know, through Africa, and they used Postress as that platform. And Postress went and made like the special API which we got to use, which uh, gave us access to all their code, so that Oxfam could uh, have this platform to promote their campaign. Also, it was pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, well, okay, so um, I think in terms of just speaking from a perspective, we've done a couple of little campaigns with regards to social responsibility. Um, we've done a couple of um, breast cancer campaigns. I know our last one, favorite of mine, was called We Love Boobs. Um, and um, we've done last year with the whole oil spill in the Mexican Gulf, we you know, helped out there. And I think what's important with that, though, is... Um, Sometimes it's it's easy kind of throwing money at something. I know for a fact that personally, that's normally what I tend to do. Is um, because we've been a successful company, it's sometimes much easier to sponsor financially. And I think uh, personally, again, from my side, hats off to people like Dave that's willing to donate time. I think that's some, sometimes um, a much harder thing to do. Um, as I said, something that we don't necessarily do within Wu Themes enough. Um, personally, I, I, I'm a big believer in social responsibility and, and entrepreneurs in general kind of giving back. Um, I co-founded Rockstar Foundation that physically helps with the you know, funding and the, uh, and the education of um, underprivileged girls in South Africa. So I believe in that. I believe that regardless of how successful you are, and I'm not kind of preaching, um, just saying I, I do believe in, in, in giving back. And I think, um, I think the challenge is for more of us to donate time and effort um, and not just give the 100 rand. Um. So I can just add very quickly, sorry, I'm in it for the money. But what, I can say, but, what I, <laughs> but what I can say with WordPress specifically is because it's so easy to get into, why are there not more, uh, when you say giving back, why are there not more, and maybe there are a lot, and I just don't know about them, but a lot more of these sort of, uh, maybe underprivileged, maybe people who can't afford it, maybe people who just don't have the opportunity can go and learn how to use it. I mean, it's extremely cheap. There's so many free themes. Basically, all you need is an internet connection, and you can you can put up a site, you can start interacting online, you can, it, it, it may, uh, I don't know, foster entrepreneurship, whatnot. So, um, yeah, maybe let's put out a challenge there to you guys like Friends of Design and that, I don't know. Yeah. I think just in answering your question, Jess, uh, in terms of why that's not happening is because the overhead is the education bit, um, and that is really tough. It's not just a case of giving someone, I mean, I, I can you know, set up a new hosting account, I can pay for that, I can quickly install WordPress, I can quickly install any of theme, but that doesn't stop there. Though, um, with most users, that requires the education bit, and that is the tough bit. Um, and unfortunately, someone's got to pay for someone's time to actually do that. So it's, I think it's a it's a bigger problem um, than just kind of throwing money or time at it. It needs infrastructure um, and the challenges are vast. Uh, 
I just want to say uh, with regards to that, like the majority of the sort of underprivileged people, they, they don't have access to computers and they use their mobile phone. Um, and that in, in itself is like, there's a billion challenges there. Like uh, I'm good friends with the guys at MoTribe and um, their, their social network, which has like one and a half million people, you must, you must hear the stories there. They have no idea that they're in a browser. When they get to MoTribe, they don't even know how they got there. They don't know what a URL is, let alone, you know, what a blog is or anything. They just, they land up there, they see like a, a chat form and they start chatting. They close it, they forget about it. They never know how they got there again. What, some, what they do sometimes is um, they try and like retrace their steps. They like remember that they clicked on some adverts or something like that and they keep doing that. Um, so that, that's how they get back to the site, like 10 steps, you know, like advert, 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 MoTribe. And uh, that... You know, the, the challenges on that front are so massive besides, you know, giving like each of them a laptop or something like that. Um, yeah? You've got a question? I'd like to make a comment on the education side of things. Um, I think one of the biggest challenges we've got in the country itself is that it needs to be about you know, on the government level. Yeah. Government needs to put it in the educational level and say, cool, we're going to adopt open source, we're going to have the people work on lines through open office, and then want to look at the CMS tools that are out there. Good point. Thank you, Matthew. I want to know what works and what doesn't. Uh, so, cool. Start with Addy. Don't know why he gave me the mic because I don't know. Um, I think in all our experience, and we've just released our 101st theme yesterday and I think um, going forward we'll still have a couple of misses in terms of determining what kind of products do sell and, and don't sell um, and I don't think there's a black and white way of actually knowing what sells what doesn't um, but I do you know, subscribe to the kind of mentality some of it um, is included in the lean startup kind of you know, way of developing customers um, and developing products um, release often you know, release early release often um, that kind of thing, not committing, you know, a full year developing a product um, and then finding out after a year that it's not going to sell or that users wanted a different feature set um, because that way you will probably fail. Um, so kind of, you know, work towards, uh, especially if you're developing something you know, bigger than a theme, for example, work to minimal vi minim minimum viable product um, and just base it on that um, and then get customer feedback. I think for us, the only way we know what works, what doesn't work, um, is through interaction. Um, and then obviously sifting through the kind of vocal 10% and the actual 90% that, that use it because sometimes there's a big disconnect. And that the people that actually use, you know, you, we've had this countless times that the vocal 10% would criticize a product, yet, you know, becomes one of our best selling products. Um, so, and experience kind of allows you to, to sift through that. Um, but as I said, work towards minimum viable product, release early, release often, and, and, and get customer feedback. That's the only way where he, you are ever going to get close to determining that. Um, I suppose the biggest mistake that w when we launched was we launched these th three themes which were massively detailed. And um, the potential for modifying them wasn't that much. And also, if, if five people bought the th your unique design, it was no longer unique. And... They couldn't identify it, uh, you know, with their own brand or whatever. So, what we found like is is uh, minimal themes are the ones that do the best. And you know, one of the key criticisms from designers who, who look at WordPress themes, they're like, oh, "I can do a better job than that." It's because they 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 seem to think, or well, there's this perception that I know is out there because I I face it all the time. Is you know, the themes aren't creative enough, or detailed enough, or or good looking enough, or colorful enough. It's because I may like green, but you may not like green. So you always have to like place that into consideration when you're creating your products for WordPress. I think one of the, the one of the things that works really well for us is uh, getting amongst it, um, going to word camps, talking to people, meeting people, and um, uh, for us, it's really hard to do that because most of our, our staff live in New Zealand, which is in the middle of nowhere. Um, but yeah, I think to the best of our ability just to get out there and talk to people um yeah i sort of think adi really did nail the oh, nail it we're running out of time now um 
I don't think we really have too many too long for questions. Um, so does anyone have any questions? If you do, I need to pass the mic to you. Hi, uh, just a quick question for Jess. Uh, regarding dealing with clients, um, as Ashley said, sometimes you get a client who's just a bit off. Um, sometimes a bit off. Uh, sometimes you get an email that says, um, WordPress is free, so you know why must I pay you? Or they will say something along the lines of, uh, have you seen this link on the WordPress codex? Maybe you should try doing this. You know, almost trying to tell you sort of how to do the thing and then saying, why must I pay you? I'm telling you what to do. Um, any advice on how to combat that? Okay, so yeah, personally, I haven't haven't done that. I, for, for me, I'm one of those clients potentially that you will like. There's something that I need you to have done. It's your baby. I don't even want to worry about it. I just want to see the finished product that we've agreed on, discussed, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I would say if someone does that, that that's potentially somewhere where you can uh, tell them off. Um, I'd, I'd presume that that's where you need to be very, very strict. I spoke about it. Dave also mentioned it now. You need to be very clear and strict and probably have some sort of project plan, things like that, a scope, as, as they call it. But um, look, I think usually, if I've had a question like that, usually an email very quickly told me, no, 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 the reason we're doing this is da 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 da. Uh, and then I'd keep quiet. But um, yeah, if you've got a really off guy, you need to just probably tell him in a nice way somehow. That's it, mate. You know, just um, otherwise, hey, look at the name at the bottom of that link. Contact that guy. You know. Also, WordPress is free. Mm, yes, but all the themes free. No, and all the other things. Yeah, that's that's the end of the day. So, yeah, you, you don't want to tell him do it yourself, but that's basically what he's saying. Hi, I'm Nikki. Um, I'm fairly new to WordPress. I haven't really b had much experience with developing on the platform. Um, but more and more clients are coming to me these days saying to me that their sites have been developed in WordPress. So I've, that's why I'm here today, to find out more about it. Um, what I do find interesting and something that's concerning me, and I'd like to ask you guys as experts in it, is a lot of clients that come to me, that they, they don't actually know that they should have access to the back end of WordPress, to the dot dashboard. Their, their developers have never given that to them. The, a lot of them don't understand what it's about. And that. And is that is that right? Is it wrong? If you've, if you've developed a site in WordPress, do you automatically, should you get that access? I, as I said earlier, uh, WP101 videos, uh, they're really useful. It takes you from just the standard dashboard right through to configuring widgets, co activating a theme. Empower your users. Give them access to the back end. Because if they're empowered, they won't be your problem, so to say. If they want something customized uh, or if they want something out of the ordinary that WordPress won't do out of the box, for sure, then you need to code that. Maybe they won't have as much access to that. But there are ways, somebody did a talk this morning, Byron, about how to make the back end more accessible. Turning off certain features, hiding it from their view so it doesn't confuse them. I definitely think clients must have access to the back end. Um, the back end of WordPre WordPress has uh, improved UI wise. It's uh, come a long way from when I started. I can't remember what version, it was 2.5. I watched a bunch of slides how it's changed and it's really simple to use people get it within an hour watching a few videos they get it so, and encourage them to post content it's so important a website is dead without fresh content and I, I actually when I build my site I try to get my clients to come for training sessions to finish loading the content um, to me it's important that we, we create the framework, we do it properly, we do it professionally, but maybe there are certain pages where the, it's just kind of monkey work for us. But for the clients, it's very constructive for them to actually load that. Use short codes. WooThemes have got some great short codes. We use a lot of their themes. So um, we encourage that our clients use those short codes to enrich the pages. And when they do that, they feel so much better. I, I saw some people leave my office the other day and they they were just ecstatic about this new, they actually came today and they left today and they had this new knowledge, even more so than when they left my office the other day. So definitely give them access to the back end. Anyone else? We're kind of running, okay, one more question. Ryan. Hi, how's it going? Uh, my question's for AD, particularly because I use WooThemes religiously 
and going into um, the marketing side of things. How effective do you find your affiliate network? I mean, I see it as word of mouth. You're just incentivizing your customers to kind of spread the word more than anything else. Uh, do you, th does that turn into a, um, a highly profitable angle for you or is it, um, how do you find the whole process of it? So, um, simple answer, about a third of our sales are originated from affiliates. So, highly successful, um, big driver of traffic and sales for us. Um, so, again, something, if possible at all, that I'd recommend for selling any kind of you know, online product or service is get an affiliate program because it basically allows your loyal u most loyal users to, um, to sell your stuff on your behalf, um, especially where there is sometimes that education gap or the reach where... I can't specifically market our themes to attorneys, but there's someone that could. They could use that to monetize um, their efforts. Um, treat your affiliates like gold. Like they, like they Likewise with the uh, themes, they also bring in a third of our income. You know, when you release a new product or something, make sure they know about it with the emails and screenshots. And, you know, if they ask for a banner, like, make that banner, like, straight away and get it to them. It's, like, critical because uh, the affiliates send, will send through a huge amount of traffic. I've got some t-shirts, uh, they're geek gear from RSA Web. I'm huge on Twitter, ad as a friend, social networking, hashtag. Anyone want one? Okay. Ah, who else? Okay. John and Ryan. Whoa. <laughs> there we go, thank you very much. Uh, that's a wrap for the panel. I think that was one of the better panels that I've been to. Maybe I'm biased because I'm on the panel. Um, <laughs> but I've had an absolute blast. Thank you, everybody. It's been a day of WordPress awesomeness. Woo!